Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Replicate Virtual Machines with Veeam Replication for Disaster Recovery. In this video, I'll talk about first why you need replication for disaster recovery. From there, I'll show you how to create a replication job, how to fail over virtual machine replicas, and then finally how to go back and undo failover. And with that, let's get started. So first off, why do you need replication in the first place? Well, for disaster recovery, I mean, that's really the obvious purpose for replication is to replicate virtual machine backups off-site and get your data off-site in case you have a disaster at the primary site. It could be that your SAN is down for 24 hours. It could be that your primary data center has a virus. Whatever it is, you need to get your virtual machines off-site in case there's some form of disaster. And one more great reason may be that you don't have to create tapes and move those tapes off-site. If you have enough bandwidth between your primary and backup data centers, you could use replication to replicate all your backup data across the wide area network to the alternate site. You could do this every night, and then you would never have to create tapes and move those tapes off-site. You'd have a continuous flow of data or backups going across the WAN every night. Now, at high-end availability storage systems, they call this CDP or Continuous Data Protection, but with Veeam Replication, you can get near CDP availability thanks to VSS and change block tracking in vSphere using Veeam Replication for really a fraction of the cost. And keep in mind, to take advantage of this, you don't have to have some sort of disaster. You can bring up a virtual machine from a replica anytime you need to. Perhaps the primary virtual machine was corrupt. It's very easy to bring back a virtual machine from a replica. So with that, let's go over to the Veeam Backup Console and let me show you how to start replication and then we'll show you how to use those replicas. So we're here in our Veeam Backup Console and what we want to do is to perform a replication up here. There's a big button that says replication on the toolbar. It brings up the replication wizard and let me tell you ahead of time that performing a replication is just like performing a backup. You need to take into account those same sort of transport methods that you would use to get the data off of the ESX servers and onto the backup destination or replication destination in this case. So let's go ahead and click replication here. And this brings up the backup replication name. We'll just take the default here, replication job one, and click next. And this brings up the replication mode, and this should look very familiar because it looks just like the backup mode screen that we used over in the backup wizard. So what we want to do is to select the virtual appliance mode because we're running Veeam Backup and Replication as a virtual appliance, and we can take advantage of the vStorage API using the virtual appliance mode. I'll click Next here. And now we're being asked which virtual machines we want to replicate. Just like in a backup, we'll click Add here, and then we can select which virtual machines need to be replicated. If we go into our HADRS cluster here, let's go down and let's just select one of the small virtual machines. I know that this ultimate deployment appliance is a relatively small virtual machine. I'll add that to the replication. But just like in a backup job, you could select entire data centers, you could select ESX servers, or the entire cluster, whatever you want to select, you could bring it in here to the replication job, and then you can go in and you can create exclusions as well. Exclude virtual machines or whatever type of containers you want to exclude. You can exclude virtual disk, and you could exclude templates if you're using the network backup mode. All right, so we have the virtual machine we want to replicate. I'll click Next here. And now we need to select a replica destination. If we click Choose here, we're being asked the target host or storage that we want to send this virtual machine over to as a replica. Now you should know that the replica destination needs to be another ESX server. I know that this virtual machine is currently running on ESX server number one. Let's say that we had an alternate data center and that ESX number three is over at that alternate data center. If you haven't added the ESX servers at your backup data center to Veeam Backup yet, you would want to do that before you create the replica job. So we're going to replicate this virtual machine to ESX server number three and specifically to data store one under ESX3. I'll say OK there. So now we have a replica host and a replica data store that we'll send the virtual machine to. Now alternatively, if we have a bunch of virtual machines we want to replicate, like the very first time that we're going to replicate our entire virtual infrastructure or some critical set of large virtual machines, you can choose to perform initial replication here using removable storage. So in other words, a USB external drive you could hook up to the Veeam Backup server and you could perform that replication to the USB drive. It's a really cool way to perform your initial replication. You could take that USB drive over to the backup data center, import those replicated files, and then you'd have a fresh starting point where the two sites are in sync. 
Now, alternatively, you could perform the replication to another ESX server and then move that ESX host to the other data center. So we'll uncheck this. And then notice here that all replicas will end with underscore replica. That way, we'll know that it's a replica. Let's double check the advanced settings here. We'll get an email when this replication job is completed. All the other advanced settings are the same here. Compression, vSphere, we'll try to use change block tracking, and we'll keep 14 rollback points. I'll say OK. We'll say Next. You can try to enable VSS integration, which is great if you're trying to get transactionally consistent databases. In the case of this small Linux appliance, I know that it's not Windows-based, so VSS isn't going to work, so we'll just say Next here. Now, just like a backup job, you can schedule to run this job automatically. So let's say that we want to do this every night at 4 a.m. every day. We'll click Create here. And then we'll check the checkbox here to start this job or run this job as soon as I click Finish. Click Finish here. And there you go. You see our new replication job has been created. It's not a backup job. It's a replica job. You see it's playing there. We can double click this and we can see that so far no data has been processed. It's checking the ESX host license level. And that's because to use change block tracking you need to have the hot add feature that comes in specific editions of VMware vSphere. So now the replication is starting. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back as soon as the initial replication is done. All right, we're back in our replication job here has completed. You can see that it took about 24 minutes to replicate the 1.9 gigabytes of this Linux virtual appliance. So what can we do with this replica now that it's created? I'll just say OK here and let's go into replicas over on the left hand side here. If we expand this out just like a backup job, we have replication job one and underneath that we have the replica of the virtual machine we created. We can see that there's one restore point here and if we expand these column headers out a little bit we can see the source host was vCenter and the target host was ESX3. So if we right click on this replica let's take a look and see what we can do. We can fail over to a particular version of the replica or we could even use the replica to restore guest files. Now before we perform one of those two choices let's go over to the vSphere client because I want to show you that this replica is actually a virtual machine in the vSphere client. You can see right here here's UDA 2.0 beta underscore replica. That's the virtual machine that we just replicated. And of course the state right now is powered off and you can see the name here is identical to UDA 2.0 beta that's above it, but it has the word replica underneath. And this is running on ESX3, or I should say located on ESX3. It's not running right now, whereas the original is located on ESX1. So we replicated this virtual machine with a replication job from ESX1 to ESX3. Now let's say there was a total disaster and ESX1 located in the primary data center was wiped out. ESX3, assuming it's located in the secondary data center, now has a replica of this virtual machine with all the data. You could simply power on the virtual machine, and when you had this disaster, you could get some critical service provided by this virtual machine up and running in no time. Think of the power of that if you perform this replication on all your Exchange email servers, maybe your SQL servers, and other application servers. All these critical application servers could be replicated over the WAN in case you had a disaster and simply powered on when they were needed. And if you enabled VSS, assuming those were Windows virtual machines, if you enabled VSS, you would even have application and transactionally consistent replicas so that very little data was lost. So now let's go back to the Veeam Backup and Replication Console. And now back here in the Veeam Backup Client, if we go up here and we click the Restore button, Previously, when we performed restorations with virtual machines, we restored from backup, these top three choices up here. But now that we have replicas, we can restore individual guest files from replicas right there if we want to do that. We can also perform failover to replicas, or we can undo previously performed failover. So let's go ahead and perform a failover. I'll say Next, and we'll choose the virtual machine that we just replicated. It asks for the restore point. Well, so far we only have one restore point. We'll select that and say next. And then we'll click finish. And the failover to UDA beta 2, the replicated version, is beginning. 
Let's give it a second to process here, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. That just took a few seconds, and the failover is completed. I'll click Close here. So now let's see what happened over in the vSphere client. So over here in the vSphere client, you can see here's the primary virtual machine that we replicated originally, UDA20 Beta. And what we did was we replicated it down here to this other virtual machine with the same name with underscore replica at the end, but on a different ESX server. But notice now that the primary virtual machine is powered off, but the replica virtual machine is powered on. If we go into the task and events for the primary virtual machine, What's been going on here, we can see most recently that a snapshot was performed. Create virtual machine snapshot, remove virtual machine snapshot. That was done so that Veeam replication can perform the replication of a copy using change block tracking. And then if we look at the new virtual machine or the replica virtual machine down here, the one that's now primary and powered on, and we go into task and events for that virtual machine, we can see, if we go over to the right, you can see the times here. These all happened together. The virtual machine was reloaded. It was renamed. A snapshot was taken. We reconfigured the virtual machine. And then the virtual machine was powered on. So that's the process that it took to make that virtual machine the primary virtual machine. So we failed over from one virtual machine to another virtual machine and from one ESX server to another ESX server. And that could have been a failover from a primary data center to a backup data center. Now all we need to do to move back is to undo this failover. So let's go back to the Veeam Backup Client. And if we look here in the replicas, you can see UDA Beta 2 has a little play button next to it. That means it's running. It's the active virtual machine. If we right click on it, we can click here and undo failover. And it says that undoing failover resets all data of the running virtual machine to the latest replication state. Are you sure you want to undo the failover? So let's think about this for a minute. What's going to happen is, let's say that some files were changed on the replicated virtual machine during this time while we did this test. If we undo the failover and we go back, then that data would be lost. So this is something that you need to understand when you perform these failovers of these replicas. That's how it works. You just need to know that. And that this is most useful for a test for you to test the replication to bring up the failover virtual machine, try it out for yourself, make sure it works, but don't change any production data because you're really just testing it. And in the event of a real disaster, you would use that failed over or that replicated virtual machine, and obviously you would need some time to rebuild your primary data center. You would re-replicate the virtual machines to the primary data center and then fail over. So that would be the process of going back. Again, the testing we're doing here is really just a test to make sure that the replicated virtual machine really does work. So I'll click yes here. It says it's undoing. Let's go back to our vSphere client. And let's look and see what happened here to the replica first. Here's the replica. And we can see the virtual machine was powered off. We reverted to the snapshot. We removed the snapshot, reload virtual machine, and rename virtual machine. So we're not using the replica anymore, but we do have to go and power back on the primary virtual machine. I'll click on it here, go to the Summary tab, and then just click Power On. All right, so we successfully test the replica virtual machine. And if you wanted to do further testing when you had put the replica into failover mode, you could have gone to the console, you could have ran some applications, tested your database, whatever it is you need to do to make sure that the replicated version really worked. All right, so let's go over to the Veeam Backup Console. And we can see here the failover has been undone. I'll say close there. And let me talk briefly about the replication job. If we go into Jobs, we right-click on the replication job and go into Properties. Let's go through here and let's look at the job schedule. Let's say that we had a Windows virtual machine and we wanted near CDP availability. One thing we would do is we would enable VSS to make sure we were getting transactionally consistent replicated data. Then we would go here and we could run that job periodically. In fact, you could even run it, let's say, every five minutes. And every five minutes, all the changed blocks for that virtual machine would be replicated to another ESX server, let's say, at a disaster recovery site. So without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on high-end storage area network equipment, and replication features, you could achieve near CDP replication. So it's not CDP replication, but it's near CDP replication 
and you may even be able to tweak this down to maybe even one or two minutes depending on the amount of blocks that are changed on that virtual machine and depending on the amount of WAN bandwidth you have between the primary data center and the secondary data center. So that's how you configure near CDP replication using Veeam Backup and Replication. So with that, let's go back to our slides. And let's summarize what we covered in this lesson. We started off by talking about why you need replication for disaster recovery. You need to get your data off site and you could even do replication jobs, let's say instead of backup jobs. The two are very similar, but a replication job is sent to another ESX server and you can enable failover and test those replications, whereas backup jobs are sent to network shares or to local physical servers. Thanks to the new features in vSphere, specifically the vStorage API that enables change block tracking, we can use Veeam backup and replication to get near CDP replication. You can set those replication jobs to run every few minutes and you can use VSS or volume shadow services to ensure that you get application consistent replicated data. Then when we moved on to step by step, I showed you how to create the replication job, then how to fail over to the virtual machine replicas. At that point, we could have tested the virtual machine replica to make sure that our application was up and running. And then I showed you how to undo failover, and then we powered on the original virtual machine. I think it's really amazing that Veeam Backup also has this replication feature built in. And if you can create a backup job, you can create a replication job. It's very easy to manage and very easy to use. So thanks for watching this video covering how to replicate virtual machines with Veeam Replication for disaster recovery.